All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to my dimly lit fortress of despair. Um, so, you may remember I uh, developed a um, piece of hardware for the color computer uh, that I refer to as the Game Master cartridge, which uh, the cartridge itself is, is really a technology um, for, of course, is intended for games um, or anything else that might benefit from having a sound chip, I suppose. So, that's the thing, it's a bank switch cartridge, so it's a got the bank switching to allow for more storage of game data or program or graphics or whatever. Um, but also it includes an SN76489AN um, programmable sound generator uh, or synthesizer, if you prefer. Um, anyway, it's a three channel uh, audio tone generator plus a, a single channel noise. Um, pretty standard fare for back in the 80s. It was used in some a variety of arcade games and a, and a variety of home computers. I don't really go into all that right now. But um, so I happen to be looking over some stuff related to the uh, the Dick Smith VZ200 or VZ300. Um, for those of us uh, in the United States. Um, anyway, um, so apparently there's a popular peripheral for those machines. So those machines are pretty similar to the color computer in some ways. Use the same video chip, uses a Z80 microprocessor, but still kind of the same basic market. It's um, almost like a Z80 version of, of the MC10 in some ways. Um, but again, similar to the color computer. Um, but it turns out back in the day, um, it, it was a popular peripheral that I think it even started out as like a build it yourself. Um, maybe you could buy some. It's called, uh, so the device is called CompuMuse and it's uh, plugged into the printer port of the VZ200 or VZ300. Um, but it had a um, an SN76489A uh, chip on it. And so that's kind of cool. So really, this is almost like a, a um, it's essentially like Sir Sound, really. It's just instead of a serial port, it's a parallel port. But it's the same chip, and um, I was reading some articles about it, and uh, or printouts of articles uh, from back in the day. And I had this um, one uh, that um, make music with your computer. <laughs> And it's from um, Electronics Australia, August 1983. Anyway, and so like so many programs or uh, articles back in the day, you can uh, probably see there there's a, a printed listing of code for a program in there. So it turns out that this device really is literally just, it's, it's basically the uh, the chip on a stick, so to speak, or in this case on a port. And so uh, the parallel port on the VZ200 or VZ300 was basically just a port. You write to it, it would show up at the, the down chip. It doesn't really look any different from the single byte wide address um, that I use in the GMC for accessing um, um, uh, the sound chip. And so as long as you change, uh, you know, this is a Z80, so it's using out instructions. We'll just change the out instructions to Poke instructions um, with the right addresses. The basic program is is pretty similar. Basic, um, uh, it's essentially color basic, just adapted a bit for the Z80. So you can take those programs, or there's two programs in there, and um, you can run them, or type them in, and make some minor modifications for accessing the hardware, and then you can run them and access the Game Master cartridge. I don't uh, quite have the setup for the actual hardware here, but I do have XROAR available. The latest versions do support the emulating the Game Master cartridge. So um, I'm going to share my screen, and then uh, um, we'll see about getting XROAR started. And okay, I'm now sharing my screen. So oh, let's start XROAR. Here I'm using the little trick there. You can see my name type. It's a it developer for MAME, but it also works with the, the dash type option to XROAR. And you can see that uh, you can do the dash card GMC and you can do the dash no card auto run so it won't try to auto start. 
Um, but it'll start your X roar. And that other little trick I was saying at the end is does it to type the stuff in. Uh, but it has now has access to the Game Master cartridge hardware. Uh, and that's at address um, FF41. So you, you might see the address there. So you see this pokes. Um, but if you run, you can run this. And it just offers you some uh, canned effects. And so select them. That's not a bad little electronic bell. Phasers fire, and I like the phaser fire. Um, yeah, birds chirping. Not sure. I, the uh, the company is apparently use a, a lower oscillator than what GMC is using. So I had to convert a few values. I'm not sure I did the conversion right or really at all for birds. Uh, since mostly left it alone, but um, because it's got a lot of randomization in there. Anyway, birds doesn't quite sound right, but maybe it's fine. Um, if anybody has an actual CompuMuse and a VZ200, to try these on, then please do so. Um, anyway, here's the explosion. I talked over it. All right, so not bad. Um, again, there's the program. And um, there's a, a second program. Uh, that's called GMC Tool. Um, it basically lets you pick values for setting up certain tones. Not quite as much fun to play with, <laughs> but um, as it types itself in here, uh, basically just lets you choose whether you want to do a tone channel or the noise channel, and then what values use for a given frequency or whatever. Um, so we're almost done here. Where? <laughs> okay, so uh, that on the space is a little funny. I'm not, that's the original spacing, so I didn't change it. But I want to define a frequency. Let's say we want to do a 440 hertz. I think that's uh, the A near C4, something like that. Um, it gives you some information that might be interesting. Which voice do you want to use? We'll just use the voice channel one. So you'd write to set one of these to tone generators. You write two bytes out. So it's saying to write first a value of 140, and then a value of 17. Then how loud do you want it? Let's give it a 12. So there's your volume control byte. And do you want to hear it? So press H to hear it. You can hear it again. Yay, all right, so done with that. So that's a tone. You can do that for any of the three tone channels. You can also define a noise. You want white noise or periodic. Um, we we'll just try white noise. You want high pitch, medium, low. Let's try medium. And we give that a, a And there's the values you would send. Do you want to hear it? Do you want to hear it again? Very cool. Um, and the periodic noise, how does that sound? Um, give that one a uh, low pitch periodic noise value of 13. More of a buzz. Anyway, so that's. Let's do the programs. I'll uh, probably find a way to make these available somewhere. Um, you can feel free to send me an email or uh, bug me about it. Um, or bug me on Facebook. Um, but anyway, uh, some cool things to um, to play with now. And uh, if you have the Game Master cartridge hardware or if you have XROAR or uh, MAME, um, they will emulate the cartridge and you can mess around. So, very cool. How about that? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching. See you soon. Check out the uh, episode 39 of the Coco Group podcast coming soon. And uh, beyond that, Coco forever. All right. Bye.